Your radio on air online, Lake 96 1, Saturday at the 70s from the Land of the Lost, one of our close enough songs today. A cover of a song from the Beatles' White Album, a song that John Lennon once called a piece of garbage. One man's trash is another man's treasure, and the group The Underground Sunshine from around Montello, Wisconsin, they ended up uh, going top 30 in 1969 with their version of the Beatles' birthday. The Underground Sunshine is the focus of our Homemade Hitmakers Month feature this week as we look at the local and area acts that made it nationally and internationally during the 1970s in the month of March. And to talk with us about the Underground Sunshine is their manager at the time. And also at the time, he was a disc jockey at the Top 40 radio station in Madison. Coochie Coo and Boogaloo, baby. It's Jonathan W. Little on WISM. No better place to be. A DJ at Wisdom, as well as the man who put together two legendary Madison radio stations, Z104 and Triple M, Jonathan Little. Jonathan, thanks for joining us on the program. We appreciate it. Thank you. Now, at the time when uh, when all this was rolling out with Underground Sunshine, how long were you uh, a disc jockey in Madison at that time? I was a disc jockey in Madison starting the fall of 65, and I got a phone call from a friend of mine in Green Bay. This would have been in early 1967. A friend of mine who called himself Charlie Brown on the air there called me up and said, you know of anybody who'd like to do afternoon drive at WDUZ in Green Bay? And I said, you're talking to him. It was while I was in Green Bay, I was approached by the brothers, Frank and uh, Bertie Coble, asking me whether or not I would manage their band. They had a three-piece. Uh, it was the two boys with their friend uh, Rex Rohde. Rex was guitarist, Bert was the bass player and lead vocalist, and Frank was the drummer and did some, he did lead occasionally, but primarily harmony vocals. That was the birth of Underground Sunshine in uh, like 1967, and they asked me if I'd manage them, and my response was, I don't know anything about managing a band, <laughs> and they said, maybe you can book some bar gigs for us, and we'd like you to suggest what cover versions we should work up. So that's how it started. While I was managing them, this would have been the fall of 1967, they wanted to do some recording. So we uh, went to a studio in Appleton, laid down, I think, three or four cover versions. And as we were driving home, they said, you know, we seem empty uh, as a group. We're missing an instrument here. What do you think of adding a keyboard? And I said, what do you have in mind? And Frank, the drummer, who was dating my sister Jane, said, well, I know Jane would be interested in joining us. She's a great keyboardist, and I think that would kind of fill in the gap we have here. So uh, my sister Janie joined the group. We bought uh, our Farfisa electric piano that they could carry, and uh, she began playing you know, various bar gigs and so on. But mm -hmm. that would have been in 1968. So in the fall of 68, the Beatles' Double White album came out. Right. And I took a copy of that home, listened to the whole thing one night, and went to the station the next day and called Capitol Records and said, what's the single going to be? And they said, uh, the Beatles have decided there will be no single from that album. Uh, so I called the members of the band the next day and I said, as soon as you can, I'd like you to work up the Beatles song Birthday from the Double White album. I'll make you a tape copy of it. The album just came out. My idea was this. I, I decided they ought to record Birthday because I've been a disc jockey long enough to know that if you answer your phones, 50% of the phone calls are from someone calling to say, could you wish my husband a happy birthday? My son turned seven today. Could you wish? It, could you mention his name and play a song for him? Right. And I thought radio really needs a birthday song. So we rented some time at the Dave Kennedy Studio in Milwaukee and went on down and recorded birthday. I say it's your birthday. And I must say it was rather prescient that uh, the choice was made to add your sister as the keyboard player in the band because it's really the organ that drives that song. Da, 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 da. Right. Yeah, that uh, that Farfisa mm -hmm. electric piano gave it a distinctive sound. It definitely did. Yeah. What were your original plans for the release of it? Was it just going to be a regional single at that point? Well, that's really how records were starting back in that day. Uh, unfortunately, radio has changed so much that uh, regional bands rarely get an opportunity 
opportunity to break a record. But that was happening and had been happening for years and years and years. And my intention was to make copies, and I did. I rolled reel-to-reel five-inch copies up onto five-inch reels, and I sent them all around the state to friends of mine who were program directors. And within about a week or ten days, it was the number one requested song in Wisconsin. And that was reported by Don Nichols, who was the PD at WSPT in Stevens Point. Mm-hmm. He reported that to the Bill Gavin report. It was a radio tip sheet, but really more than that, it was the sharing of information by program directors and music directors. Bill got this idea back in the mid-50s that uh, music directors and PDs had ideas of what was happening and what was working in particular markets and ought to be sharing that information. So Bill shared what happened at WSBT in Stevens Point, and that immediately began ringing my phone at WISM. Uh, Warner Brothers called, and MGM called, and Universal called, and and on and on and on. Mercury Records called, and they all wanted to talk about this single, and was I interested in a record deal for this band, The Underground Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Uh, The most aggressive company of the bunch was Intrepid, which was a division of Mercury. Of all the labels that called me, and it was at least seven or eight labels called, Charlie Fash, who was the president of Intrepid, said... Would it be okay if I stopped by to see you tomorrow? (laughs) Maybe it was a day later. Uh, But he flew in, and he flew in with a contract. (laughs) So so that kind of moved things along pretty quickly. Yeah, he meant business. He sure did. And we'll have more with Underground Sunshine Manager Jonathan Little coming up as we bring you more Saturday at the 70s here at Lake 96.1 during our Homemade Hitmakers Month.